You're listening to the Health and Happiness Podcast with Travis Kemper and Lauren Maxwell. Each episode, we share easy to implement strategies to improve your health, happiness, and overall quality of life. Don't take life too seriously. You will never get out alive. Albert Hubbard. How's it going, Lauren? <laughs> it's going great, Travis. <laughs> we are... How did I make you laugh? That the intro with the quote with your voice, it just hits different. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> um, we are going snowboarding next weekend with some friends again, and I'm super excited. Um, and we had some, well, by we, I mean me and Keely had some good puppy play dates this week after work, which was super nice. It was a really, really busy work week, and it was very cold outside. So my neighbor invited Keely and I over on Thursday after work, and we watched Friends and let the dogs play, and it was probably my favorite moment of the week. Lots of laughter and fun. Um, and today, I'm going down to Phoenix to celebrate my grandpa's 96th birthday. 96, wow. I know. Good for him. I know. My wow. grandparents are amazing. <laughs> You have you have mentioned that to me on several yeah. occasions. Yeah, they are awesome, so, and they're like well, you would never even know that they're in their nineties. By the way, they like they move around and keep active and do all the stuff. So, well, happy birthday to Lauren's grandpa. Thank you. I will pass along your message. <laughs> How's it going, Travis? Good. I got my new business shirts. I'm very excited about that. Yay! Yeah, they look great. Team. Thank you. They came out really well. I'm uh, really good. I'm I'm very happy. Um, on a sad note, we've missed out on two great pups, but we're going to look at another one today, and we're trying to get Dukaru a playmate. Yay! Uh, I hope you guys find one. Soon. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure we will soon. One, but we're soon. being yeah, we're being very picky because we don't want to bring more anxiety into. I mean, the house because yeah. duke is already a little bit anxious and Me too. yeah he's a little bit wary of others yeah gotta so find we'll, a good fit yeah yeah what i need is sable but unfortunately we all she's need not a sable yeah we <laughs> well, we didn't save her dna to clone her Damn. anyway what are we going to talk about today <laughs> Well, Travis, I got inspired while I was at work this week because my work tends to be, or it tends to look really different because I work with children. Everything I do for physical therapy with kids has to be done in a form of play. And therefore, from an outsider's perspective, it just looks like I play all day. And I guess truly I do. <laughs> it's purposeful play, but still play nonetheless. And I think one of the reasons I love it so much is it because it forces me to embrace my inner child. I can't feel awkward being silly because being silly is literally what makes my kids enjoy therapy. Half of the time, I feel like I don't even say words, especially with my littlest littles. I just make sound effects and noises to keep them entertained. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a lot of silliness. <laughs> but playing all day for my job brings me so much joy that I thought it would be beneficial to talk about why play is so important, not just for children, but for adults too. Yeah, there's a lot of benefits to play. Uh, it allows us to learn how to be creative and helps nurture critical thinking, personality development, and adaptive pathways for us in childhood. The benefits of play are far reaching, but we often give up play as adults for more serious pursuits, such as our careers, our relationships, and our family. All of these are valid pursuits. None of these have to be done without play. Agreed. Play for adults is critical in our stressful go-go lives. It has been shown to release endorphins, improve brain functionality, and stimulate creativity. It can even help us feel young and energetic. Studies show that play improves memory and stimulates the growth of the cerebral cortex. Play has also been shown to trigger the sensation of BDNF, which is a substance essential for the growth of brain cells. Pretty fascinating. While the benefits of play and physical activity are well known, we would not be doing this subject justice if we didn't talk about what happened in the school systems in our lifetimes. I see this up close and personal. I'm very passionate about it. I'm going to try 
not to yell. Um. <laughs> it's something I'm very passionate about too. One of my goals for like creating the financial independence that I've created is if we have kids, I'm pretty sure I want to homeschool them because I can't put my kids through what I had to go through. Um, sitting at a desk for six hours, bored out of my mind, listening to somebody try and tell me to rem memorize names and dates instead of actually what happened and the cool stuff about history. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm very passionate about this one too. And it drives me nuts. Yeah, it is infuriating. Um, <laughs> and I've yelled a lot about it while we were uh, preparing. So I'm going to try to keep a little bit more calm right now. Um, scientific research consistently documents that recess plays an important role in the school day and has benefits for children's cognitive, social, and physical health. Furthermore, it can improve children's achievement scores. But by the late 1990s, and probably worse now, I don't know, I didn't actually look at this, like the most recent stats, 40% of school districts in the United States had reduced or eliminated recess altogether. And I've seen this play out in my schools that I work at. Like, they haven't done recess in I don't even know how long. And even PE is like not a year long thing. It is only a special for one quarter of the year. So double whammy. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, well, that's crazy. But also when I was in school, I had a lot of energy. So you know what they do at recess? They make you stand on a line so you don't get to play, re play at recess. <laughs> it's like, so looking back, knowing what I do now, it's like, wow, these are the dumbest people in the world and it they are in charge of my education. It would have helped you so much more to be able to run at recess than- It would have helped them so much more. Yeah, I know, both of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, some argue that reducing breaks in the day will help to maintain concentration and classroom routines. That's one of the biggest arguments, I guess, I guess. Um, however, scientific evidence does not support the notion that reducing break time would improve concentration and achievement. In fact, controlled experiments document that recess can improve children's attention to academic tasks and thus enhance achievement and learning. Recess is also associated with improved classroom behavior and attention, facilitates children's social development and social competence. There's like a million more things um, I could go on for probably hours about all the benefits of recess. Yeah, well, in those breaks, taking breaks um, isn't limited to children. Uh, no, it's I not. I often <laughs> work with my patients to, to take breaks, one for your physical pain, but also for your mental stress and pain, because you can't sit, uh, at least 99% of us can't sit for four hours at a time and wait for lunch and just work. It doesn't mm -hmm. work like that. None mm -hmm. of our brains work like that. So I've not seen a study that recommends sitting for more than 50 minutes at a right. time, which is why schools used to be like 50 minute periods. And then you'd get up and you'd go. And now I think they're doing longer periods because, you know, <clears throat> well, frankly, it's the government in charge of the school system and you put them in charge of anything and they just look at the research and they're like, yeah, but we're going to do the opposite of that they because that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll just flip it over on the back and act like we never saw this crap. <laughs> yeah. That's infuriating. Um, some advocates of decreasing recess argue that PE classes provide a more structured setting in which children can engage in physical activity and thus should replace recess. This is also not happening. Like I said, my schools are also decreasing PE. But sure, argue that. <laughs> While PE is, I'm not saying PE is not valuable. It is incredibly valuable for children's development and health. And I think definitely should be a year long thing. But both are recommended because recess allows for unstructured child directed play, allowing children to choose activities and develop rules through cooperation, which leads to so many like social benefits, like learning to problem solve and and like take different perspectives because children are motivated by children and they're more likely to probably have conflicts with other children rather than adults because they're little and but because play is such an important part of their lives, they're also really motivated to work through those, um, 
those arguments and those differences of opinions. So it's so beneficial. I personally like this argument. Like you're arguing for PE against recess and then you're taking both away. So <laughs> 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 like, what are you what are you talking about? I don't know. They do, I you, mean before the podcast Lauren told me that in her schools they only do PE for a quarter of the year. Yep. <laughs> that, is, that sounds like enough physical activity. We should stop. For a quarter of the year, and then they don't do recess, and yeah, it's called a special, and they rotate their specials. Mm. So Dr. Stuart Brown has been studying play for decades, and he outlines five archetypes of play. Rough and tumble play, this is one of my favorites. This is also Duke's favorite. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a great learning medium for all of us diving, battling, tug of war, capture the flag, scavenger hunts, kickball, and dodgeball are all ways to play actively. According to Dr. Brown, this through this form of play, we develop emotional regulation as well as cognitive, emotional, and physical mastery. Ritual play. This would be like chess and board games. We also do this almost weekly. Um, there's set rules and structures that fall into the world of ritual play. <clears throat> in this type of play, we create, strategize, design, and engage in activities that bring people together for a common purpose or goal. Imaginative, imaginative, imaginative play. I think I got it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is one that I can't imagine very many adults do at all. Um, so this is Remember when you were a child and had so much fun living out your fantasies and letting your imagination run wild? This is what imaginative play is all about. Coloring, storytelling, painting, drawing, crafting, and acting. As well as comedy and improv classes all foster our imaginations through play. Body play. Learn. This is not as sexual as it sounds. Okay, phew. <laughs> he defines body play as a spontaneous desire to get ourselves out of gravity. <clears throat> How much fun is this form of play? Yoga, Pilates, hiking, whitewater rafting, riding roller coasters, mountain climbing, surfing, and snorkeling all fit the mold of body play. I do all of these all the time. These are my you favorites. you surf? Well, I have surfed. <gasps> really? I didn't know that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I'm not very good. But I could get up on my first day. So there was that. Awesome. And then I could fall down. And you surf. Here's a note for you. If you ever go to Hawaii and are going surfing, you don't surf over, like, nice sandy beaches. You surf over volcanic rocks. And it hurts like hell. Oh, that sounds when terrible. You, when you hit the rocks. Yeah. It's interesting. But I guess that's where the waves are better. I don't uh, really know if this is a fact. I just know that that's where that's our surfing lessons were. Gotcha. So I assume that that's that they didn't like pick the worst place for us to start surfing. Yeah, when I would we imagine. were going to get cut up. I had several cuts. Uh. Um, object play. This form of play will really bring us back to our childhoods as object play can encompass building with Legos, playing with Jenga blocks, building fortresses, and even having snowball fights. Manipulation of objects, building, and designing all fall into this play a category. I don't play Jenga anymore. My wife is way too good. Nolan is like a Jenga beast, and it really? drives me insane. Well, Nolan and Julia are going to have to play Jenga when they are watching Wishbone. Yes! That sounds like a plan. <laughs> and nobody's going to understand that except for, <laughs> except for Julia, Nolan, me, and Lauren. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the play is deeply ingrained in our evolutionary drive to survive. There are lots of benefits of play. We've already mentioned, I feel like, so many of them. But in case you need more and more reasons to play during your day. The benefits of play are that you learn social and societal rules, you learn physical, cognitive, and emotional skills, you learn cooperation, fairness, trust, you strengthen your bones and muscles, it improves endurance, 
play helps us connect with other people and feel safe around other people. It leads to laughter, which as we discussed in episode six, leads to a lot of health benefits, including decreased mental health issues and a longer life. Play makes you more productive. Studies have shown that kids who engage in more play end up with higher social skills down the line, and playing is such a good way to make friends. Yes, as an adult or as a child. Yes. Lauren, I think I mentioned on the podcast last year, I was trying to find a sport that I could play. Yeah. And I think this year I'm going to have to make one because I need, you need to, play. to get out and play. And uh, I mean, we play a lot, but I need to get out and play a sport. It's more fun mm-hmm. for me. Uh, and there are no leagues here. I think I'm just in too small of an area and oh, it kind dang. of drives me nuts. But I have a park one. right next to my house, so I think I could start a kickball. Yes. We could do kickball league. Do it. Yeah. So as soon as the snow melts. Sounds All right. Okay. Acting like a child can improve your life. Those who don't make time to play are prone to depression and, and feeling of being stuck in a rut. Research has shown that playful mates have the most luck in love. This one surprised me a little bit. There are surveys that rank 16 personality train characteristics in order of preference, which showed that playfulness, fun loving and sense of humor all made the top five for both sexes ahead of qualities such as physical attractiveness and income earning capacity. <laughs> so I think that what's that saying is that laughter and playfulness are more important than money or attractiveness. Creativity has the capacity to help heal. This is why art therapy is a thing, not just for children, but for adults as well. Drawing, sculpting, and collage has been shown to reduce the damaging impact of stress on the mind and body. 75% of subjects aged 18 to 59 had reduced levels of cortisol, which is the hormone released when a person is afraid or stressed after only 45 minutes of free artistic play. Lauren, what should our challenge this week be? Well, get out and play. (laughs) Seems like an easy one. Yes, think of it as activity you haven't done in a while and go play and have fun. Go play with other people too. Yeah. 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 Hopefully you can get a couple of people. We had game night, you know, last week. Yeah, so. us too. Yeah. Awesome. Lauren, great job today. You too, Travis. This was fun. Thanks everybody for listening. And we will talk to you next time. <laughs> <laughs> On the next episode of the Health and Happiness Podcast. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to listen to this episode of the Health and Happiness Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the episode and are getting benefits from our content. If your life is improving in part due to the information in this podcast, we would greatly appreciate you sharing the episode with your family and friends on social media and leaving us a review so we can continue to reach more people and improve the health and happiness of the community at large. Thanks again, and we will see you next week for another episode of the Health and Happiness Podcast.